All right, what is this mess of gobbledygook I've got here? Here are my solar panels up here. They're in pairs. Um, there are 12 of them, so there will be six pairs of solar panels. I mean, six negative leads coming out of there, six positive leads coming out of there. The Okay, there's one glass solar panel that has a higher voltage that's paired with another one of the other ones. That's going to be used to charge the batteries because it has a high enough voltage to charge the batteries. So the two leads from that, then the positive and the negative, will go to the charge controller. And then leads from the charge controller will come out to the batteries. And then from the batteries, you know, the uh, motor thingy gets powered. Okay, so all these other five leads, what are they doing? Uh, <clears throat> the five negatives are going to go through diodes, and I have some diodes. And then they're just going to go into a joinerizer, a, a negative bus. Let's call it a joinerizer. So this will just, these will just uh, hop in with the negatives on this side and go to the battery. But th those won't usually do anything because the positive leads from all those solar panels that are not charging the batteries are going to have switches. So I can turn them off and on. So they're not always connected to the battery. Now these shouldn't be high enough voltage to overcharge the battery, which is why I have that other, the glass solar panel in there. But just in case, I'm still going to disconnect them when I'm not using the motor. Okay, so the positives from that come to a bunch of switches that come into uh, all the pluses together, which, you know, will go to the battery. But more importantly, will go to the motor thingy. And I could actually put a diode in here to make sure this doesn't go backwards, but that would have to be a pretty serious diode because there's going to be a lot of electricity going through there. So yeah, forget it. It doesn't matter. Uh, this won't be enough voltage to screw up the batteries, so it should be fine. And I'll have a, a voltmeter in here, just connected in, that'll tell me the voltage, and I'll you know pay attention to it a little bit. Okay, so that, that's everything I'm doing I think okay this is going to be a chunk of copper pipe with some holes drilled in it so I can attach wires so, so we can put some stainless bolts in and attach a bunch of wires together um, I'll make probably a plastic thing to attach all these diodes just so they're not flopping around uh, and then I need to make five switches and I I might as well make six switches. I can put a switch on this or on this. Just, you know, so I can disconnect it if for whatever reason I need to. All right. Six switches. A copper thing with some holes in it. And something to attach the diodes to. Okay. Here are the diodes. Diodes are one-way streets for electricity to prevent the electricity from going the wrong direction. These are pretty heavy-duty ones. I got them... Uh, I don't remember some, I searched online for surplus diodes and it took a while, but I kept my eyes out and I found these for a buck a piece. Okay. Five diode inputs and one other one. Okay. I've got my five diodes. Two can go here, one there, two there. And then the input from the charge controller that can come in to this hole. And then the big out, this one will have lots of power, put it right in the middle so all the electricity has the shortest distance to travel from everything. And then one hole for a rivet to mount this somewhere. All right, looks good. Now this is just a smushed piece of copper pipe. One of these. Okay, I've got all my diodes coming in. Boy, that looks like something fancy, like something important. I'm like 90% sure those are aiming the right way. The arrow points at the negative and then electricity can flow, right? All right, so this covers all this mess. Now, five switches, six switches. So I'll do one side too. Oh, six switches. See what we've got here. Well, it got dark all of a sudden. I think there's a storm a brewing outside.
Oh yeah, that's a storm all right. I'm losing my light. All right, those look good. Okay, five more of those, five more of those, and five more of those. Oh, tiny little sparks. Big fingers. A leftover piece of fiberglass for something from something all these contacts here are this thing here it's like the, the joinerizer so these are all connected with a, a piece of flattened pipe that goes down the whole thing and then one wire will come off that and go to the, the batteries and the motors and stuff now I could connect the electricity the out at the end but that means all the electricity from all these are going to go through it that's going to be like 60 amps however if I connect the the outgoing wire in the middle half the electricity goes through this side half the electricity goes to this side so it's only 30 amps at most right here all right now this other side is going to be all these different wires coming in so before I can attach these, ooh, good looking switches, I need to attach wires to them. So this piece of flattened wire here raised this up a little bit. So I'll do the same thing over here, raise this up a little bit with a piece of flattened wire or flattened pipe that has wire coming into it. So I already have all the wires that are going to be coming into here on the boat. I'll strip the ends, stick them in pieces of wire like this, crimp them closed, flatten the end, drill a hole through it, put it under there, screw it in, and Bob's your uncle and mom's your name or whatever. I don't know. All right, this line here marks the size of the box out there. How do I want to arrange everything? Uh, I think that's it. I've got all my diodes back there. Charge controller switches. Positive battery ends over here, negatives over there, and a little bit extra space for lunch, whatever. I don't know. All right, this needs something to mount it, and this needs something to mount it. That needs a hole cut under it. No, maybe I can just put it in like that if I need to adjust anything yeah there's enough space to tip it up and this is the entrance right here all right that's okay I don't think I even need to mount it it can just sit there mm, this thing I'm not gonna worry about yet I'll just put it there it's not gonna move around much with a few wires attached I've now got one two three 48 volt batteries 
and they're all currently reading 51.7 volts. Excellent. Nice big fat four gauge wire to go to the motor. I do have some fatter wires over there. However, four gauge is bigger than the connectors they have on the motor. Okay, I think I have everything worked out enough that I can go put it in the battery box. I connected all the wires I won't be able to reach very easily. Okay, I think, yeah. All right, I'm gonna start moving stuff. Several hours later. Well, everything's in there. Nothing's on fire. This is a good sign. Oh yeah, lots of stuff. I have everything connected except for the motor. Uh, I think I should, before I do that though, I should uh, just organize the wires a little bit, you know, tie them up and stuff. Make sure they're not just flapping around. Everything's electrically connected. But yeah, I want to put some, some cable ties and stuff in there. I've got some packing garbage. And I think this will be good above the batteries. So they don't get uh, heat from the heat from above. Because there's, there's a solar panel above the batteries. And then sun will hit that, so it'll get hot. And this will keep the heat from getting down to the batteries. Now I just want to check that everything's doing what it's supposed to do. Alright, where is it? Alright, I want to check that this is actually charging. Okay, we've got a positive contact on the batteries there. Now this is the out for the motor, which is connected to the main negative bus, so that should give me the right voltage. 52.3 volts. Now let me turn off the solar panels. 52.1. Turn it back on. 52.3. Okay, it looks like it's working. Now if I disconnect this, the voltage should go down slightly. Yep. If I connect the solar panels to the charging, it should go slightly back up. Okay. Looks like it's charging. And again, nothing is on fire or melting. I don't feel any heat anywhere. Everything looks right. The little charge controller light is blinking correctly. I don't know. I might be good. Oh great, I'm getting peed on. I guess I should put a bit of silicone up there. Just to make the water go the right way instead of inside or go outside. Alright, I guess I'll come back in an hour and check it again. The voltage should be higher and still nothing should be on fire. Mm, it's looking good up there. I didn't end up attaching my main negative ariser here. This is where all the negatives come in and connect. Because it's got so many wires connected to it, it doesn't really move anywhere. You can move it up and down a little bit, but that's about it. All right, solar panels, do your charging for a while. I love these solar panels. Got them from Solbion, these guys here. Oh, it's a good thing I check everything. Because it turns out I put the wires on one of these solar panels backwards. Which doesn't work so well. So the negative was the positive and the positive was the negative. So when I went back there and tested all the individual switches, everything was showing up with the right voltage, except for one which was negative the right voltage. So I figured out which one it was. And yeah, I totally plugged it in backwards. Uh, it's easy to fix though. I just cut one wire, put it where the other one was, and then splice the other one. So basically just criss crisscrossed them. Everything looks good now. So uh, yeah, I think I'm about ready to connect a motor to this thing. I've even got my motor connector down here. Yeah. 